we're talking about Scorsese's style. Yeah. Describe it. What does it? What does it? What does it look like? What does it feel like? I, I mean, to me, it feels like when I'm watching it, it feels like I'm being given the most exquisite information, and I'm being given it in a way where it's almost like being injected into my bloodstream. You know what I mean? And I think visually, he's so. He's got one of a kind way that he shoots films and the way he captures moments, and you can always tell that it's his, it's his vision. You know, when you see, and I feel that with the pilot that when you see the pilot, you know it's him that created that. You know, these amazing moments of picking moments where he really slows things down. There's such a beautiful moment in the pilot where you literally see the fringe of a jacket move so, be and you almost, you hold your breath while you're watching it, and then moments that are so fast. So he really fucks with speed for people, and I love that because it does make you. Made, I've watched the fight, and I felt like I was high as a kite. You know what I mean? And I think he really has the ability to do that, and especially for this time period. I again, I'm, I was in it, and I forgot I was in it because it just felt so authentic. Everyone so looked like they were in 1973 doing their thing, listening to that music and being in it. And I think Marty has this incredible ability to just take you there. You know? Well, your character very much in it as well. I mean, can you, yeah. can you, can you talk about what, what her, official biz, her official job and her unofficial job? Yeah, her <laughs> official job is she's an assistant <laughs> to an A&R agent, um, to Julie Silva, um, played by Max Costello, who's just the greatest. And um, actually, what she really wants is to be her own A&R agent. And she, uh, she will. She will. She's feisty. She's fiery. She's going to do what it takes to, to be heard, especially you know, she's a young girl in a very male-oriented business at that time. And uh, she's not afraid of that, though. She's going to be hard. Um, let's talk about women at that time. Yeah. How, how what, what were they? I mean, they weren't, it, wouldn't, it was not like today. They were not respected like they were today. And, you know, it was this complex thing for them where they weren't treated uh, in, uh, anywhere near as highly as men were. They weren't taken as seriously as that. But it was a huge time for women in the 70s because, um, a big change that happened was um, birth control was created and became legal, and abortion was legalized in 1973, which was huge. For, when you think about the liberation of that for a woman, to be able to use sex kind of like a man did, and you know that opened so many doors for women where it's kind of like, oh yeah, I can have sex with you and I can walk away. It doesn't mean I have to marry, it doesn't mean I have to have your baby, and that was, you know, I think if you were a smart woman and you were a sexy woman, it became this kind of, wow, that's a whole new, that's a, that's a very liberating, Thing for me and men had to look at women slightly differently too with that and I also think you know it was a time where women were really starting to speak out being like actually we are just as important as men feminism was so prominent you know and I think women were really I mean thank God it happened because it's part of the reason why we get heard today you know now this is also before the age of sex sexually transmitted diseases mm -hmm. um, there's a real sense of freedom mm -hmm. can you talk about that okay. yeah I mean I think that you know I think is that well, it was a revolution in the 70s. It was, I mean, real freedom, I think, started in the hippie movement in the 60s where it was like, free love, let's get high, let's woohoo, with all this folk music that kind of made you want to softly dance and like take acid and all this kind of stuff. And then you went into the 70s, which was like, boom, and punk rock appeared, and it was like, actually, we want to start a revolution. We're angry with how our parents were treated. We want to fucking change. We want, we want to, you know, spin the universe the other way. And, um, and they were free to say that, you know? And I think... Um, the freedom that that was around in the 70s was why people had such a voice and and I think especially through music you know I think punk rock that came out of the 70s was like one of the most visceral sounds you've ever heard god it made you feel things it like affected your bones you know you didn't have to like it you didn't have to love it or maybe you did it is completely but my god it made you stop in your tracks and listen and say what are these people saying you know and I think not every you know decade would let a generation speak out like that. Um, I thought Marty really captured the era really oh, authentically. Me too. Uh, would you want to spend some time in that I era? Wish. I wish. I'm literally living my childhood fantasy right now because I wish that I was a young woman in the 1970s. I wish the wardrobe, the music, the the you know the the revolution i mean yes i think it would be complex to be a young woman but i also think i would have definitely fought to be heard back then and i think you know i think i i find jamie so inspiring because of who she is in that time period and because of her ear because of her brain because of her sexuality because of the way she walks into a room because i don't know i think i think 
she's very inspiring, especially in that time period. But I think she'd be inspiring today too. The guy in the picture behind you, Bobby. Oh, what that one? Yeah, I've met him before. <laughs> <laughs> what's he like? A, what's what's sort of an actor is he? What, what's oh it? my god, so giving and so in it. I mean, he spends so much time having to be coked out of his mind. The energy that he brought to the table with that, and and I think you know, the uh, how he, he would walk on set and he completely understood his character. He so he so knew Richie down to his toes, and I think that was so inspiring to watch. And I always used to get so excited to do scenes with him because he's also, he likes to play, he likes to talk about it, he wants to figure things out, he wants to make it the best it can possibly be. I mean, he was the most perfect casting as a ringleader for all of us because he just kept it up there and we were all like, yes, we're following you, let's do this, let's do this, you run this company, you know? And I think, I mean, it shows. He's so, he's gonna be so brilliant in the show and I'm so excited for the world to get to see him really do his thing, you know?